Hey uh, guys, this is Josh, and you're stepping to the Jones on here for a second. I just had something I wanted to say real quick, and it's that, you know, I have been working on some things that are very fact, very data-driven, you know, requires a lot of analytical power, you know, in order to present. And uh, typically I'm someone who is, you know, I'm, I consider myself to be not just a data-driven, fact-driven person, but yes, you know, feelings are involved, spirituality is also a big thing with me, so kind of find myself um, kind of having to balance the two when it comes to faith and logic and, uh, you know, knowing whether or not, you know, uh, or how to use the discernment, okay, on using the two, when to use fact, when to use uh, your uh, faith. Um, and I think that you should always try to incorporate both of these kinds of things to your life, the ability to analyze something, reading, logic, all of those things. Incorporate that with your faith, and I think that it becomes stronger because you are combining the two in a more holistic way. And I think that you, you, when you're doing that, you're coming or you're addressing whatever the situation may be, you're doing it from a holistic, a more complete position versus someone who's just relying solely on faith and someone who's just relying solely on logic. I think you really can be like the warrior who has the sword of logic in one hand and then the shield of faith in the other. And that's what I try to be. You know, um, we got to really balance this out. I see a lot of debates where it's just the typical faith or biblical text versus a lot of scientific data and uh, analyses and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of the times, these data people, they're coming out on top. They, they, they seem, their positions seem stronger in, in many cases, not overwhelmingly, and, 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 but it's, it seems to be a stronger position that they have. And I think it's because what we're doing is some people are just allowing their feelings, their own whatever um, bias that they may have, you know, um, based on their limited perspective, whatever that may be, uh, whatever uh, religious background or whatever it is, they're letting that kind of, and their connection with that, cloud their judgment when it actually does come to that point of presentation. And I think we need to become a lot better and we need to become more balanced because that is how you, you really engage these people who are scientific minded, who are, who are data driven. You have to do that. I mean, yeah, they're, they're kicking your asses in there. When I see a lot of these debates that are going, I know you, a lot of people are not in there for the debates and the confrontation and all that kind of stuff, but I am and not just exclusively for that, you know, but um, it's also just being able to have a dialogue with people who have another uh, position other than your own and you can learn from that that's just how I've always learned you know um you know I, don't be lazy you know what I mean when it comes to trying to um gauge reality and understand reality and get involved with reality don't be um very lazy when it comes to that and just oh I'm just gonna you know just believe and you know and all this kind of stuff because this is something you're comfortable with and all of that it's something you've relied on for some point in time no we live in a real world too Yes, there are dreams. Yes, there are things that are going on of a of a paranormal uh, nature or something like that. But it that doesn't mean that okay, well, there isn't a point at which reality, you know, what I'm saying is is it becomes this this thing that is very real that we have to contend with, you know, every morning, every day. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. You have to always stay grounded in some in some respect. And always try to analyze what's going on in your uh, in your surroundings. Okay, now there seems to be some kind of misconceptions when it comes to the etymology of the word Kemet, which is an old Egyptian word. It's not Greek, you know, as some people are espousing. No, it's an old Egyptian word, and it probably had a precursor uh, name before it, before it was Kemet. I'm, I'm not sure, but it may go back into uh, prehistoric times. But... As for Kemet, yeah, it is Old Egyptian. And we do know that the Greeks in history, at around the, the 4th century, uh, during the reign of Alexander the Great of Macedon, we know that the Athenians, they had an empire. They expanded that empire, their influence, into uh, what is Kemet today. But they named it Letopole, is what they called it. That's the Greek name for Kemet. Fact. Or another thing is, don't waste your time debating people who have no factual basis in reality whatsoever. Like, if you're debating somebody, you know, and they don't read at all, 
You know what I mean? They don't know how to accrue information. I mean, that's a that's a, a, a red flag. You know, this is somebody who lives in their head, who wants to perceive the world from their own limited perspective. You know, it's really not a good idea to waste your time debating people like that. You know, but if you somebody, you know what I mean, and you can read, you know what I mean, you can devil in some 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 facts, you can back that up, you know, with with a, a face based kind of methodology or something like that. Yeah, you you know, I'll fuck with you, I'll debate you or whatever it is. But no, I'm not. Uh, you know, we'll have a discussion, maybe. But no, we uh, you know, don't give time to people who are, uh, you know, only in their heads and in their ego about things. So yeah, hope that helps for people who are going through this. Another example of this that is more common or more uh, recent would be New Amsterdam. For all of you people who live in New York, it was once called New Amsterdam. And it will pretty much always be called New Amsterdam from the perspective of the Dutch who held New York at one point in time when it was New Amsterdam. Okay, that's just an example. Names and places and things, these things start to change when they're exposed to new civilizations, cultures, and things like that. That's just how it is. Literally, a hundred years from now, the Dutch can literally be like, yes, we're going to New Amsterdam. You know what I mean? And it will, it, you cannot say, oh, that doesn't exist. It'd be like, oh, you're the Dutch, so New Amsterdam would be the name that your people gave it when you held it. That's how that works. Pack your bags, everybody. We are going to New Amsterdam. Yeah. And they would not be wrong.